it, it, it does not appear that there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. And right now, that, yes, that was definitely looked like it was on purpose. You saw a yes, plane? Yes, I just saw a plane go in. On September 11, 2001, at 8.45 a.m. on a clear Tuesday morning, an American Airlines Boeing 767 loaded with 20,000 gallons of jet fuel crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The impact left a gaping, burning hole near the 80th floor of the 110-story skyscraper, instantly killing hundreds of people and trapping hundreds more in higher floors. As the evacuation of the tower and its twin got underway, Television cameras broadcast the live images of what initially appeared to be a freak accident. Then 18 minutes after the first plane hit, a second Boeing 767 United Airlines Flight 175 appeared out of the sky, turned sharply toward the World Trade Center and sliced into the South Tower near the 60th floor. The collision caused a massive explosion that showered burning debris over surrounding buildings and the streets below. America was under attack. The attackers were Islamic terrorists from Saudi Arabia and several other Arab nations. Soon after takeoff, the terrorists commandeered the four planes and took the controls, transforming ordinary commuter jets into guided missiles. Soon after the first plane hit, a second one struck the second tower, and approximately an hour later, both towers collapsed. The death toll at the World Trade Center was near 3,000. American Airlines Flight 77 circled Washington, D.C. and slammed into the west side of the Pentagon at approximately 9.45 a.m. Approximately 200 people were killed in the Pentagon. Meanwhile, a fourth Cal California-bound plane United Flight 93 was hijacked about 40 minutes after leaving Jersey. Because the plane had been delayed in taking off, passengers on board learned of the events in New York and Washington via cell phone and air foreign calls to the ground. Knowing that the aircraft was not returning to, to an airport, as the hijackers claimed, a group of passengers and flight attendants planned an overtake of the hijackers. Sandy Bradshaw, a flight attendant, called her husband and explained that she had slipped into a galley and was filling pitchers with boiling water. Her last words to him were, everyone's running to first class, I got to go, bye. Osama bin Laden, the mastermind behind the September 11th attacks, remained at large until May 2, 2011, when he was finally tracked down and killed by U.S. forces at a hideout in Pakistan. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda, and a terrorist who is responsible for the murder of thousands of innocent men, women, children. Today we remember the events that happened 12 years ago, the true heroes that day, as well as the heroes who are still fighting the war against terrorism on a daily basis. We salute you. Here are a few more remembrances of that awful day in our nation since 9-11. I was watching the news and they were just all really sad. Any other thoughts? I just think that we should be thankful that we live in a country that protects us from this kind of thing and that now we're being more cautious. The day of 9-11, I was actually uh, sitting in an office at Fort Sill uh, where we actually heard the news of the planes actually crashing in the first tower. Uh, we then progressed to watch the rest of it, uh, it escalate into the second plane into the other tower. Uh, that afternoon, we were actually locked down on Fort Sill to get further word on what we were going to do as far as deployments or any kind of action that we need to take for security reasons, uh, but that's what I was doing on that day, is I was stuck on base, being locked down. Just the fact that uh, we keep our soldiers in mind and what they're going through and that we never forget all the stuff that they do and all the people that help support our soldiers as well and uh, keeping them safe overseas and supporting them while they're overseas as well. Thank you. I just remember a lot of people being really scared and not being sure what was going on. Um, I remember finding out, um, I was teaching in Guthrie at the time, and we were outside with the kids before school, and my principal came up and said, did y'all see the news? Something just hit um, the Twin Towers, and we were all just kind of freaked out, and all anybody did that whole morning was watch TV and watch the news. Okay. How do you feel that it changed our nation? 
I think it made people a lot more aware of what was going on around us. I think we became a lot more um, perhaps stereotypical of people and how they dressed and how they looked because we were really worried about just others and the unknown. And I think, um, unfortunately, I think our ignorance towards other people and religious groups was definitely heightened through that experience. 9-11 was a normal school day to start out with until about 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock I had called a uh, fellow teacher and um, was talking about some school business and they said, have you not heard about what's happened? And so everybody went to the TV then and we started watching the news and realized how serious the situation was. It changed our nation in ways that will never return to normal because because of that we have to be cautious about the people that we are around. Uh, we have to be cautious about our own safety. Uh, we have to be aware of what happens when we travel to other countries. What I remember is that we were having our first child and living in Denver, Colorado. I went out for a run and came back in and I was taking my tennis shoes off. My wife uh, woke me up, or I woke my wife up and told her that we were being attacked. And I remember watching on CNN the buildings collapse. It's a terrible day. How do you think it changed our nation? I think it made us more patriotic in a sense. Um, we had not been attacked on our soil in well over a hundred or so years. And um, it just showed that we were a resilient country. Today for lunch we're having lasagna, broccoli with ranch, peas and carrots, garlic stick, fruit and milk. Tomorrow for breakfast we're having cereal, toast and jelly, pineapple, juice and milk. Tomorrow for lunch we're having hot dogs. Senior class officers and any seniors who wish to help with the homecoming float, me and Ms. Janda's room, 15 at B lunch on Friday. Key club members, don't forget to sign up at Mrs. Knox's door to join. Dues are $12 and you need to do this by September 24th. NHS members, remember that if you want to run for office, you need to fill out your official nomination form from Mrs. Forehand in room 33. Don't forget that softball travels to cash tomorrow starting at 4 p.m. and there's home volleyball here against cash starting at 4 p.m. Cash is ranked second in, in 4A and we're ranked first. The volleyball team is requesting your support at their game that evening. Get out there and yell loud. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a moment of silence. Attention, salute. Pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now join me in a moment of silence in memory of all the lives lost on 9-11 and the lives lost since then fighting the war on terrorism. Thanks. And God bless the United States of America.